to uh, learn about angel investing, which thanks to the future entrepreneurs to get funded by angel investors. Welcome. Um, so a little bit about me. I, at SCB, I manage bank relationships with angel universities and incubators. So I've immersed myself in the angel world for the past um, 12, 18 months, and it's really, really exciting to be here and to talk with our panel here. We have a really unique and diverse mix here. We've got two very, very successful entrepreneurs that have raised significant, amount, significant amounts of capital, uh, both from angels um, as well as from institutional investors. We have a mix as far as one is a serial entrepreneur and the other is a first-time entrepreneur, so you're going to hear a unique perspective in terms of their experiences in raising capital and what it's been like. Um, we also have the pleasure of having two really wonderful angel investors who have been at this for quite a long time. So um, we have Bob Zip and, um, and Ivan Sunkett, um, who both have a fund um, that they invest through and who have seen a lot of deals over <coughs> the year. So I'm actually going to let our panelists, rather than read their bios, I'm going to let our panelists introduce themselves and maybe talk for, uh, for Bob and I can talk a little bit about how you got into angel investing and for Anu and Todd maybe talk a little bit about your companies and your, your fundraising process. Okay. Uh, my name is Bob Smith. I'm a uh, founder and managing general partner of a fund called Amicus Capital uh, in San Francisco. Uh, I founded Amicus uh, in 1998. Uh, initially, it was a $25 million fund. It was structured as an ever evergreen, so I continued to invest out of proceeds, and I've invested close to $40 million to date. Um, I focus on uh, very early stage companies, typically uh, two people, two entrepreneurs, and a business plan, sort of what I say. Um, pre product, pre revenue, you know, immediately post conception, usually. Um, I got into uh, investing uh, as a lawyer. I, for, for the 10 years before I started Amicus, I was a lawyer with uh, Brobeck, Flager, and Harrison, and a venture law group here in the Silicon Valley representing tech companies. Uh, and in that process, came to know uh, many uh, angel investors and institutional VCs. Uh, was interested uh, in being on the other side of the table and took, took the, the opportunity when it arose. Sure. Um, my name is Amin Shukla. I'm a serial uh, entrepreneur. I started three companies and I've used uh, both angel funding and VC funding. Actually, all three companies are VC back and also have some uh, angel money to get us off the ground. I have on occasion angel invested myself. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think you know, we were discussing this panel before, and I thought it was particularly interesting that. Um, the times have kind of changed in terms of how you can get the revenue a lot faster and change the flavor of how anybody should view funding angels, VC, or otherwise. My name is Adrian Sankos. Um, I've been making angel investments for several years through my um, entity police ventures. I was an early Googler. I was there from 99 to 05. I started as the first product manager who was responsible for the international expansion. And uh, when I left, um, I kind of took advantage of this wave of um, cost going dramatically down to uh, start a company, um, mostly in the consumer internet and mobile sector. Um, and uh, in the four years, I made uh, over 50 investments. I have 11 exits today. And uh, um, even though I invest in a smaller financial scale compared to Bob, uh, what I try to do is really help the entrepreneurs with getting the best investors, uh, helping them form syndicates, and then uh, really helping them as major uh, turning points in their companies. And I also happen to be so happy to know part of the friend and also an investor in the company. So it's a very interesting perspective today to be on that. Great. My name is Todd Tachirati. I actually uh, attended Stanford in school, graduated in 2003. Uh, and in August of 2006, I raised money for a company called Bright Roll, which I co founded with an engineer who I knew from my prior company. Uh, since that point, we've raised uh, three rounds a million dollar angel round, and then two subsequent institutional rounds. Uh, so I've sort of learned uh, a lot about the fundraising process, both as a first time entrepreneur and as uh, going through both angel and institutional uh, fundraising process. Um, so look forward to that. So just as a show of hands, how many of you are planning on starting a company?
company at some point raising angel funding. How many of you are actively looking for angel funding right now? Uh, okay, great. So, um, what I hope to do in the next um, hour, and a, hour and 15 minutes or so is really help demystify the fundraising process, um, give you some insights on what angels look for when they're looking for deals, and also um, just some strategies around how you might approach fundraising from angels and some of the differences and nuances between using angel funding and institutional funding. So, I'm going to save plenty of time for Q&A, but we're going to start a kind of a general dialogue right now, and um, you know, if you have questions, feel free to, to chime in as we go along. So, um, so Todd, <coughs> to take it over to you first. So I read, um, I went, I read somewhere that when you read, when you raised your first round of funding, that you had nine angel investors that signed up for that. So, can you maybe talk a little bit about how you got to nine and what it was like rallying nine angels? I mean, you often hear that hurting angels is like hurting cash. And so <laughs> Yeah, it's challenging. Um, I think that, you know, at that time we were, as a company, myself and my co-founder, we really made a decision that we wanted to have angel investors and not institutional investors. Uh, a lot of that was driven by, you know, we were extremely early <coughs> stage. We still wanted to have <coughs> flexibility around making decisions. We didn't want to sort of have a huge overhang of, of capital in the company. And uh, we were still just iterating really quickly. And, and from our diligence with other companies, we had heard that, that sort of that was the right, right path and so we pursued it. Um, so we met in the process probably about 50 investors through that process. Um, most of the leads that we talked to during the process came from you know, a very small set of personal relationships and then asking you know, every investor we talked to to give us two or three other names of people that you know, they thought highly of. And it really is very much an iterative process through that group. Uh, but we talked about this on the call earlier, but the most important thing for us during that process is to find somebody who's willing to lead the round and, and the person who's willing to lead the round uh, really ended up corralling the group and sort of driving the group, driving the process, driving the timing. So once we found that, it did make the process a 